Are they out there? They? Who, who are they? Beings from other planets. Oh, boy. The New York Times just did a piece on Navy pilots who reported seeing strange objects in the sky in 2014 and in 2015. Their accounts and others are included in a new show called Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation. Here's Lieutenant Ryan Graves describing one odd encounter. Um, when we talked about the visual contact, uh, when it buzzed by, uh, it was very likely that that was stationary and you know we actually buzzed by it because we didn't know it was there so it was likely stationary at that time and it basically split our section when they were in tack wing um so it wasn't like it was trying to merge with us or it was making high speed pass or anything like that it was most likely stationary we just didn't know it was there or this was you know at a time where we weren't even sure if they were real or not essentially just kind of flew into it um when i say it was following us i don't mean individual aircraft I mean, wherever we were, they were there. So that could mean oh. two things. That could mean they were already there or they were following the strike group, but they weren't following individual aircraft. Um, and of course, at this point, we're, we're like, okay, well, clearly this is nothing that we're used to seeing out there. So we submitted a safety report and saying that there was an unidentified object in our working space and we don't know what to do. Wow. Wow, here with more eye-opening information is Luis Elizondo. He is a former director of a Pentagon program that has been devoted to the study of UFOs. Thank you so much for being with us. Good afternoon, thank you. I, I guess my first question is, are, Louis, are they like in the shape of flying saucers? Like, is that typically what we would see? Is uh, the classic flying saucer image or they come in different shapes and sizes? Actually, you're correct. They do come in different shapes and sizes. Um, there are the, the classic lenticular or, or saucer shape, but then there are some that look like a, uh, like a tic-tac, for lack of better, better description. And uh, yeah, and some even are, are triangular. It's really rather interesting. Hmm. You have a lot of inside knowledge, and that's what this show is all about, people with inside knowledge. Um, I think some people might be surprised to know how much money the government has spent on studying UFOs. So is it definitive then that these exist, that we're not alone based on what you know? Well, I, I have to be cautious. Um, I don't want to jump to any, any conclusions, but I, I think the first part of your question, do these exist? I think that's been substantiated. They, they are absolutely real. Now, where are they from or who's behind the wheel or we, we simply don't know. We don't have enough data yet. I know that's unsettling for some people, but the reality is, you know, is could this still be a foreign adversarial technology that somehow slipped through, you know, through the radar? Sure, it could be. Uh, could it be something else? Yes, it could be. We, we don't know. And so I don't I wouldn't want to have any um, false conclusions until we have more. We have more data. All right, Karen and I were just discussing this. Everybody thinks aliens are coming to get the Earth. Couldn't they be friendly and wanting to come in here and maybe help us and offer some alternatives to maybe medicine or advanced research? Or couldn't they be friendly people or pers or things? things? You, you know, I mean, I suppose I, I'm not qualified to answer that question again. That the, the jumping to the conclusion that we're talking about aliens or extraterrestrial life. Um, that's a conversation I think that that probably academics and 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 some people that are more qualified to 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 go into that territory. Keep in mind, my background was was simply national security. So, if there's something that's coming into our airspace or in and around our, our sensitive military facilities, um, typically, if this would be let's say a, a Russian aircraft, you would see us responding by scrambling interceptors. In this particular case, these are things flying around in our airspace and our controlled combat theaters that really do not fall neatly with any type of cat within any type of category that we consider aircraft does it happen a lot <laughs> yeah i think it happens i think you'd be surprised it happens a lot more than than you might think and i think this program that we have coming out um this friday unidentified goes into that i think the, the public will be surprised the frequency this occurs you, you worked for ATIP, is that right, the, the organization? Is, is that what it's called? I did, yes, sir, that's correct. Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. It's a, it's a bit of a wordy title, but, uh, the, you know, the U.S. government, we like to give long titles to things. And, and, the, and you resigned, is that right, as well? I did, sir, in, in 2017. And what, what was the reason? Because they, they weren't believing you? What, 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 what was the reason? 
Well, it's it's a it's a topic fraught with taboo and stigma, and I my loyalty to the Department of Defense and and the Secretary uh, has always been priority one, and I, I served with Secretary Mattis in in, in, in a combat theater, so I, I regard him in in the up, in the utmost highest regard. This is an incredible human being that that needs information so he can make informed decisions, and and the bureaucracy within the department wasn't allowing me to to provide that information, so. I resigned knowing that he would get my resignation letter and they wouldn't be able to stop it. Stop it. Uh, by the way, which is no different than Secretary Mattis did almost a year later. Mm. Mm. And you're thinking then, as we're going to get to see this on Friday, you can bring more information out for people to see. I, I do. I, I'm hopeful we can finally have a collective discussion without the stigma and taboo and, you know, the, the little sly giggles and thinking about tinfoil hats. This, this has the potential, potential to be a national security issue. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate your time and good luck with your further investigations. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Fascinating. Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation premieres Friday night at 10 o'clock right on the History Channel. For more information, you can visit history.com or set your DVRs. I know where you'll be Friday night at 10 o'clock. I want to watch. All right.